My name is Sarah Meyer. I am one third of Mirage Medicinal. Mirage Medicinal, it's a cannabinoid company, a culture and lifestyle company. We are doing several things, or trying to do several things simultaneously. We have like weed products, but we are also setting up retail stores and hopefully becoming a, a good and positive force in culture and community on a wider scale. So Mirage Medicinal was born through the vision and the experience and the journey of um, our partner Malcolm. And Malcolm is you know San Francisco native uh, he had always imagined having a cannabis business in San Francisco and so went on an exhilarating journey <laughs> to, to come up with the funds to be able to open a legal business in the city and so he was operating in the black market and he got busted twice for transporting like hundreds of pounds of weed from you know California to New York and the second time he got arrested he actually got put in Rikers Island for a year through sort of like the efforts of Malcolm and um, my husband John who is the other um, third of Mirage and Malcolm's sister Nina Parks they were able to lobby and sort of create allowances in the language of the the legislation in San Francisco to allow a former you know, formerly incarcerated individual to actually own a business in the cannabis industry um, because that was the only thing he'd ever gotten busted for so the city of San Francisco has the office of cannabis there you know they have the social equity program they're trying to make things right and balance out the the field a little bit and so that's how we have an opportunity to be in business and something that has stuck throughout everything in terms of core values and story it has always been, I think Mirage family values is something that when they were a delivery business back in the day was at the forefront, they were serving largely like medical patients that really needed weed because they were, you know, either in remission or, you know, needing support because they were cancer patients and couldn't eat or couldn't sleep. It was all inspired by all of us had sort of family members and, you know, if not us ourselves that, that needed cannabis as medicine. Um, so that and also the story of how the different people in Malcolm's family supported the business while Malcolm was incarcerated or while his father was incarcerated and kept the business going just as a testament to how you know at the end of the day it's like family's got your back you stick up for each other in times of trouble and I think that that sense of family has extended to myself and John coming into the picture it's extended to you know the village that surrounds and supports us um, including everybody here at Balai yeah I would describe Balai Creative as, um, my gosh, it's really like a gem in the middle of this city. I, you know, just from a really personal point of view and perspective, I moved here from the Philippines not too long ago, like just shortly before the pandemic started. And so this became sort of like a beacon of hope in, in many ways in terms of it felt like a place that you could call home but that was not um, home in a sense of it's always gonna stay the same and it's always gonna be just what it is. It, it always felt like it was a place that you could come to that felt familiar, but that was always evolving. It was always a place of ideation and um, you know, triggering new thought and new movement. Uh, the people that come through here are always offering and lending bits and pieces of their journey and parts of themselves to like the larger narrative, be that through their art, be that through conversations that we have in this space. So it it's, it's both a safe space but also a place for daring, um, a place for kind of like pushing forward what possibilities could be as a culture, as you know, folks in San Francisco, as people from the Philippines, as artists, as business owners and individuals. So we actually, we have a store that has been kind of at the, uh, at the mercy of the pandemic that has been under construction for legit like almost three years on the corner of Six and Folsom. So right here in the Soma neighborhood, we used to be up in there before they started breaking everything down and renovating. Um, but so once they started building out, we were kind of homeless. And so this has become our HQ. This has become, you know, a place to still be in the neighborhood to feel like we are part of the community here, to have our flag kind of flying outside of this spot in such a marquee street, such a you know iconic location has been nothing short of inspiring to us. And it's a reminder that we have a place in Soma and that we have community to build and like things to do in this neighborhood. So it's been tight. It's been, it's been inspiring and it's been stability in many ways. This has given us the opportunity to engage with 
like our folks. You know what I'm saying? So the Titty Boy is a Filipino artist. Um, repping the Excelsior and he was somebody that we wanted to collaborate with and we weren't sure how but then when this space came about and we had these you know the two the two booths um, we thought it would be cool to have him come in and kind of deck them out um, it was for a specific event but now that you know it's lived here for a little bit it's really become you know he's been able to create like a, a sense of what Mirage and the artist community can do together and can offer. So, you know, we're thinking about how to keep, you know, the installation changing perhaps, or we've also iterated our relationship with Titty into he's doing like illustrations for our zine now. So it's, it's a starting point for us. This is always sort of like the place of birth for like longer and deeper relationships. It's a representation of kind of like underground black market trap like life that, that both Malcolm and John um, grew up in and are familiar with and sort of the transition now to a more, I guess, I, well, I don't know what you call the cannabis industry now, like corporate, <laughs> a more mainstream um, era of, of can the cannabis business and sort of our mission to just elevate everybody uh, throughout, through, through everything that we do. So we uh, did a like pre, pre, pre launch party. We did our uh, very first sort of friends and family like community uh, event at Capua. And even before that, when we still had access to the spot on 6th and Folsom, we participated in Sunday streets and we had a sort of pop-up called paraphernalia in our, in our actual building. And both were, I mean, just pivotal for us in the sense that we were able to, you know, see faces and, and, you know, break bread with folks that are, you know, living, working, gravitating towards South of Market for whatever it is they're coming here for, be it, you know, culture, be it the museums that are in the area, be it seeking for representation in some way, shape or form. So it was awesome. It's been awesome all throughout. Our, our goal really was to be able to pull in our network and our market and introduce them to SOMA because a lot of them are from throughout, like, you know, be it from Oakland or um, Vallejo, like, you know, from, from whatever distances that they're traveling from and to, to let them know that they kind of have a reason to be here has been cool. I don't know that I can actually currently find the words to express. I think this is going to be one of those things where I know how I feel about it now and I know how important it is now, but I also feel like this is something that if we continue to cultivate over the next decade will be completely instrumental in shaping how the culture of the Philippines is uh, continues to be represented, continues to be kept alive and iterated almost for the you know for the the community here in in San Francisco, larger California. I've always thought that this could be a home away from home on a larger scale. And there are Filipino towns to a certain degree. I know LA just launched historic Filipino town, but there's still something about the depth of the our culture in the Bay Area that I think like is just begging to be developed and expanded and I have nothing but like really big dreams and hopes for what SOMA could be on a global scale for the Filipino community. I mean it's so part and parcel of who we are like I don't think you can it's almost hard to say that anything we do isn't embodying our culture like every first person that we reach out to to collaborate with is a couple buy in every person that's inspired us to to be entrepreneurs any person that's you know moved us through their life and the sacrifices that they've made is the only reason why we are able to do what we're doing and so it's just part and parcel of of who we are and what we what we want for ourselves i think our goal really is to be able to get so stable and so strong and so dope that we can we can do even more to embody the culture in more like literal ways but right now it's just the inherent by any hen spirit i think i think it's the flavor honestly right it's just like the the attitude that we bring every time we we show up in a room like we're by and large still some of the only Asian, some of the only brown folks in some of these rooms and sitting at some of these tables. And so while it's like mildly scary sometimes, it's it's always still an honor to, you know, to carry to carry that like here and the flag on our back like in so many ways. Yeah.
I mean, we're still waiting for her spot to open up, honestly. And we, you know, we're we're busy in the meantime. Like, we understand the sort of red tape that it takes to start a business in the city, and like, no lie, it's been tough. But you know, the the kind of hustler spirit um, and that underdog kind of like hunger and fight that we have as a team has kept us innovating and kind of looking for other options and you know opening new doors. And so we're we're working on a product line now to make that available in other stores. We also have a a partnership on a retail store in Cow Hollow that um, you know we're we're learning uh, about every every day. Like this industry is so volatile, but um, there's so much promise and hope. We've also you know got our like love project so like the zine that's coming out we've got an incredible creative um, uh, director and designer and so we're really excited to see what we can do in like the lifestyle space and like shirts and totes and then all the merch stuff and then when things become a little more favorable to, to in person and, and live events like that's where our love is, you know what I mean? Like really just being with folks. Just, you know, being being in high spirits with everybody and, and being able to talk about big dreams together, you know? Three years into this thing, like you almost have to keep it really, really real and just go one step at a time, otherwise you go crazy. <laughs> like So there's definitely huge visions that we have for Mirage, but I think right now, it's, it's just keeping one foot in front of the other and, and making progress no matter what that looks like every day um, and just making it, just pushing it through, yeah. The grandness of your dreams is seated very, very early. So keep hold on the, the breadth of possibility and everything that you imagined was possible for you, what form and what shape and what industry and what context that translates into as, as your life progresses is probably gonna look very different from what you had once imagined. I mean, we're in an emerging industry. There's a, there was a time and place where like, you know, we would all be either like flogged or in jail for, for selling weed and so it's like, it's a, it's a brand new day. Um, things are gonna keep evolving and shifting, but your truest truth, like you already know. Your truest, truest truth. It's the smallest, smallest voice, but the more you listen to it, the clearer it gets. So stay true to that and you'll never lose your way.